hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use dropout layers in convolutional neural networks in order to reduce the chances of overfitting. Now to begin though, a little background. Now, when you're training a convolutional neural network, you know it's an extremely, you know, computationally expensive process, uh, and there are lots of measures in place uh, to try and prevent overfitting, uh, just like dropout layers. But one thing I'd like to say here is that especially convolutional neural networks are notorious for overfitting. They will overfit if you do not give them enough data or safeguard against it by using an algorithm like early stopping or these dropout layers. Uh, and so like, for example, if you don't have enough data, it'll overfit to that training data and it won't work best on your test data. Um, and so that's why uh, data sets like ImageNet are great for CNNs because CNNs have so many trainable parameters that you need as much data is possible to allow them to generalize to the concept of what they're trying to learn. And so that's what I'm going to be showing you how you can do today, how you can increase the generalization of your neural network instead of having it overfit to a specific training set. Now let's actually begin here, um, and uh, as you probably know, at the end of every, every convolutional neural network, you've got this fully connected, or as they're called, dense layers. Now, they basically act as regular um, feed-forward neural networks. Um, so if I were to draw, say, um, some, some hidden neurons, say, four hidden neurons. All right, so we've got four circles representing four neurons. Uh, and then in the middle here, if I were to say CNN. So the output from a CNN can actually become the input for this feed-forward neural network. Uh, and so what would happen is the CNN would feed data into the neural network. And so we're assuming there's one more dense layer here, uh, the beginning of the dense layer is here, uh, and then that acts as input for this hidden layer. Uh, but the thing is, let's just say you're building a cat or dog classifier. All right. Uh, and so the first neuron represents cat, and the second neuron for output represents a dog. Uh, and so let's just say we want to uh, draw two neurons here, well, representing our output neurons. Okay. Uh, and then what happens, all of our neurons would actually connect to, all of our hidden neurons would connect to all of our output neurons. And then, like so. So this is what our fully connected, or dense layer looks like. Now, what we're trying to do is reduce overfitting in this section of the convolutional neural network. Because in this part, uh, you know, we can also incorporate dropout layers in the CNN itself, but that's an entirely separate video topic. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about dropout layers and CNNs inside of the dense layers. Um, so let's just say we were to implement a dropout layer. And this dropout layer uh, has a probability value, and I'll tell you what the probability does in just one moment, of 50% there is a 50% chance that any neuron here can be dropped out. So what would happen is, let's just say we've got, you know, we've got this hidden layer. Uh, each neuron would be assigned a random value from 1 to 100, okay? Let's just say these values are 50 um, and 10 and 59 and 5. Okay. So now what's happening is now, it, now the actual logic behind uh, behind choosing the you know fifty percent random dropout isn't actually you know just generating a random number and checking if it's you know one to fifty uh, then no or you know otherwise yes. Um, but this is how I'm going to represent it for you to show you that there is a fifty percent probability that one of that these neurons will be dropped out. So each neuron is assigned a value. Then we check if, if we go through each neuron and we check if the value is greater than or equal to 50, meaning it's inside that probability range. If it is, then well, that neuron's been dropped out, and I'll tell you what exactly that means in just a moment. And so, as you can see, neuron number one and neuron number three have been dropped out. This means that they will basically be completely inactive. They will pretend as if they're not there, and the neural network will not know of their existence. What this means is that for the one pass that it's currently doing, these neurons won't exist at all. And so what's going to happen is the neurons themselves, as well as all of their connections, now mean nothing. They're not there. 
And so when the semen provides input to this dense layer, what's happening is only these neurons are activated and only these neurons feed into the output layer. And let's just say that the output layer turns something like zero, um, I don't know, I don't know what red, um, let's just say it turns something like um, 0 0.67, uh, and for dog, 0 0.89. But the problem is that it was actually a cat picture. But this represents cat probability, and this represents dog probability. And so it's classifying this cat picture as dog. So you then run back propagation to increase the score for cat and decrease the score for dog. But there's another problem. What do we do with these dropout, layer, dropout neurons? Well, it's actually quite simple. Ignore them again. When you back propagate, only back propagate on the weights that are active and the neurons that are active, the ones that are in memory. What this will allow us to do is retain the knowledge that these neurons and its connections store. And when it retains its knowledge, well, in that case, we haven't changed it at all. So the neural network still has some previous knowledge, but also has some newer knowledge. And that doesn't mean, and that means that, I mean, with overfitting, that means you're basically throwing out older knowledge using new knowledge, and the knowledge that's, uh, that's there mostly in the data set, because that's the one that, that prevails the most when backpropagating. And so what happens is that doesn't ha I mean, that simply does not have a chance to survive because it's keeping older knowledge as well as newer knowledge. And this allows us to reduce overfitting by so much. And next time, say, maybe this neuron and this neuron are dropped out or this neuron and this one and or this one and this one. It's completely random, but it allows for us to prevent overfitting in such a simple yet intuitive way. Because what happens, again, is it's not just learning new things, it's remembering what it has already learned. And this allows it to generalize to the concept of a cat and generalize to the concept of a dog in a much, much better way. And this allows it to give you correct output as part of the CNN. Now, of course, these same dropout layers can be incorporated in convolution layers and more, but I'm not going to be covering that yet, as that's slightly different, uh, and the logic behind it is slightly different, although the concept is entirely the same. Uh, retain older knowledge while still learning new knowledge or, or gaining new knowledge. Um, but again, that's a topic for a separate video. All right, so I really do hope you were able to learn something from this video. Uh, and of course, though, if you did learn from this video, please make sure to leave a like down below it really does help out a lot uh, and of course so if you believe this could help anybody else you know like your friends or family at least you make sure to share the video as well all right but if you have any more questions suggestions or feedback about this or any of any of my other videos please leave it down in the comment section below tweet it to me at tajimani or email it to me at tajimani at gmail.com and my contact information will be in the description below all right, so thank you very much for watching today, but if you really like my content and you want to see a lot more of it, please do make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, as it does help out a lot, as well as if you'd like to see notifications whenever I release a new video via email and Google notification, please do make sure to turn on notifications by clicking the little bell icon beside the subscribe button as well. All right, so thank you very much for watching today. Goodbye.